Hi students, good morning. So in today's video, we are going to see the figures of speech for the poem Secret of the Machines by Rudyard Kipling. So in the last video, we have seen the explanation of each stanza of the poem Secret of the Machines. So in this video, we are going to see the figures of speech. So let us see one by one. The first one is imagery. Okay, so imagery is a figure of speech. So what is meant by imagery is, so it is the visual representation of ideas. Okay, so it creates images in the minds of the readers. Okay, so what is visual representation of ideas or how it creates images in the minds of the reader is. See, look at the examples. See the first example. He gives his harness bells a shake. Okay, so this um, uh, this poem lines you might have studied in your um, ninth standard. Okay, so... So in your ninth standard you have studied a poem uh, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost, right? So in that uh, poem you might have come across this line He gives his harness bells a shake Okay, so in that in that poem he refers to the he referred to the horse Okay, so harness bells abdina adoda kalthila kattir ka money Okay, so as the poet is stopping in a forest, okay, so on the, on the, on the horse, it, sh it will shake its harness bells. Let us go. Abdina, the master insist, it will be shaking its bells as a signal. So, we are the readers. poem we are the readers. So, he gives his harness bells a shake. Okay, so when we are reading this line, okay, just we can have a visual image in our mind. Namloda mind la namlala imagine panika mudiolia. So how it will be Adi Apriya Doda Bella Shake Panirko. Okay, just we can image it in imagine it in our mind. Okay. So that is the visual representation of ideas or how it creates images in the minds of the readers see then one more example so the woods are lovely dark and deep so this is also the this is also a line from the poem snow stopping by woods on a snowy evening okay the uh, what the poet will describe the poet will describe the woods woods here refers to the forest okay so uh, the trees in the forest are very lovely dark and deep okay so lovely, dark and deep. Deep means the forest is very thick. Dark means as the trees are very thick, it will be looking very dark. Okay, so by reading this line, we can imagine how the forest might be. Okay, so as the trees are very dense, okay, as the trees are very thick, as it is very dense, it will be very greenish to look so that it will be very lovely, nice to look. And it will be very dark inside as the forest is very dense. Okay. So, by reading this line, we can have an imagination in our mind how the forest might be. Can you understand? So, this is how, this is what creating visual representation of ideas in our mind. So, by reading these lines, we can have a, have an imagination in our mind. Right. So, that is called as imagery right so an example for imagery in the poem is we can see and hear and read and write okay so this line will be found in the third stanza last line okay we can see and hear and read and write okay so here as you all know very well, we refers to the machines. Or the poet says the machine will be able to see, the machine will be able to hear, 
the machine will be able to read and the machine will be able to write okay so we can imagine how the uh, machines help us to see how the machines help us to hear how the machines help us to read and how the machines help us to write so by this by reading this line we can have an imagination in our mind okay and that's why it is an example for imagery i think you can understand what is mean by imagery just when we are reading the lines it creates a visual a visual representation or an imagination in our mind that is called as imagery so the next figure of speech that we are going to see is hyperbole okay so what is mean by hyperbole is something which is exaggerated than usual okay something yep so it is hyperbole is also a figure of speech a figure of speech okay in which something is exaggerated than usual so usual usual ah solradha vida adha konjam better ah okay so better ah exaggerate panni solradhu da enadhu it is called as hyperbole okay see look at the example so that you can understand better see the first example that suitcase weighed a ton okay that suitcase weighed a ton so whether uh, a suitcase will weigh a ton or a suitcase or a ton weight irukuma no okay so what happened the meaning is exaggerated than usual understand see the next example there is enough food in the cupboard okay to feed the entire army there is enough food in the cupboard to feed the entire army so whether there will be whether we will be able to keep enough food in the cupboard okay so or cupboard la or entire army ku theva padra food can we keep it no illaya so the what is so what the what the poet actually wants to say is there is food for the entire army okay the suitcase is very weight romba weight ah irukku so this is what the poet want to convey but how he had said he had exaggerated the meaning of the lines okay so this is called as hyperbole okay so the next figure of speech that we are going to learn is assonance right so what is assonance assonance is nothing but repetition of two or more vowel sound okay you know what are the vowels what are the vowels a e i o u right so repetition of two or more vowel sounds in a line is called as assonance so repetition of consonant sound is called as alliteration we have learnt about it earlier right so repetition of two or more vowel sounds is called as assonance see look at the example one the sun rose high in the sky right the sun rose high in the sky so look at these words high sky so what is the sound repeated here the sound i is repeated in both high i high in sky right the sun rose high in the sky so what sound is what uh, vowel is repeated here the vowel sound i is repeated here and that's why it is the example for assonance right so likewise look at the second example so it is an example from your poem given in the book the secret of the machines all we ask okay so here all ask so what sound is repeated a sound is repeated so that's why it is an example for assonance so what is assonance a repetition of two or more vowel sound is called as assonance and repetition of the consonant sound is called as alliteration you should be able to differentiate between assonance and uh, alliteration right right and the next two figure of speech that we are going to see is connotation okay so actually this uh, this connotation is a very big topic okay there are types of connotations like positive connotation negative connotations neutral connotations so that it is not important for us to go much deeper okay so let us just learn what is mean by connotation right adds 
what is connotation is something which adds additional meaning to its literal or main meaning okay so which adds additional meaning to its literal meaning literal or main meaning so what is literal meaning so literal meaning means the actual meaning conveyed in the line is called as literal meaning right so see look at the example so that you can understand better she is feeling blue okay she is feeling blue it means avangaloda color blue color a irukuma no so here blue refers to the sadness or a feeling or sadness okay so blue refers to the sadness so what happened here here it is adding additional meaning to its actually what is she doing she is feeling for something she is feeling worried for something so she is feeling blue means she is feeling very sad or upset or depressed or dull okay so which adds additional meaning to its main meaning so avanga romba depressed ah feel pandranga nu it is adding some additional meaning okay that's why it is an example for connotation see though our smoke may hide the heavens from our eyes okay though our smoke may hide the heavens from our eyes so this is the line given in our poem secret of the machines so what is the meaning here so when a smoke is emitted by an industry or factory or by a machine definitely it will go high in the sky okay for sometimes it will be hiding a part of the sky very minute part of the sky but what is said here it is hiding the poet is telling that it is hiding the so it is hiding the heavens from our eyes so some additional meaning is added to its main meaning that's why it is an example for connotation okay so i think you will be able to understand what is mean by connotation what is mean by hyperbole what is mean by imagery and assonance right so let us see the figures of speech in the poem okay so let us see the first stanza first we were taken from the ore bed and the mine we were melted in the furnace and the pit we were cast and wrought and hammered to design we were cut and filed and tooled and gauged to fit so what are all the figures of speech in this poem sorry in the first stanza right so already in the previous poems i have told you what is mean by anaphora so what is anaphora repetition of a word or a phrase in the beginning of the line is called as anaphora okay so repetition of a word or phrase in the beginning of the line or in the consequent line is called as an anaphora so what is repeated here what phrase is repeated here we were is repeated in all the four lines in the first stanza so that's why it is an example for anaphora so we were we were we were we were so it is anaphora right and what else is in the first first stanza is see look at the alliterated words so i think there are no alliterated words in the first stanza okay so what are all the rhyming words here mine and design or rhyming pit and fit or rhyming so what is the rhyme scheme so mine design a a pit and fit b b so a b a b so this is the rhyme scheme for the first stanza right so now let us go for the second stanza some water coal and oil is all we ask and a thousandth of an inch to give us play and now if you will set us to our task we will serve you 4 in 24 hours a day so what are all the figures of speech in the second stanza is some water coal and oil is all we ask so already we have seen all and ask so in this 
vowel sound a is repeated so it is an example for assonance right and uh, what else uh, see the last line we will serve you 4 and 24 hours a day so this is an example for hyperbole okay this is an example for hyperbole so what is hyperbole so we have seen that something which is exaggerated than usual okay so what the poet says his uh, says here is the machine will serve us 4 in 24 hours a day that is 24 hours a day 24 hours so the work panite irukku namakkaga abdin solrar illaya so so definitely machines can work 24 hours but it will always work for us abdin adoda meaning exaggerate panni solradunala the figure of speech here is hyperbole okay and what are the rhyming words and the rhyme scheme of this stanza is ask and task are rhyming words play and day are rhyming words so here we can name it a a b b so the rhyme scheme of this stanza is also a b a b right and uh, is there any alliterated words yes we can find alliterated words here to task so the t sound is repeated here so these two are alliterated words right next let us go for the third stanza so we can pull and haul and push and lift and drive we can print and plow and weave and heat and light we can run and race and swim and fly and dive we can see and hear and count and read and write okay so here in this line we have seen already what is mean by imagery okay what is an <coughs> what is an imagery so it is the a visual representation of the ideas okay so it will create an imagination in the minds of the reader see look at the last line we can see and hear and uh, count and read and write so by reading this line we can imagine in our mind how the machines will be able to see hear count read and write so this is an example for imagery which we have seen already i hope okay so there are many alliterated words in this stanza simple push p sound is repeater print flow again p sound is repeater run race r sound is repeated okay let us go for the next stanza that is fourth stanza so what is the fourth stanza but remember please the law by which we live we are not built to comprehend a lie we can neither love nor pity nor forgive if you make a slip in handling as you die okay so here we can say we are not built to comprehend a lie as an example for personification okay because machines cannot uh, convey any lie machines are epovume poi solla mudiyadu illaya only we human beings are having the quality to say lie okay so here the machines are compared to the human attributes that is human qualities okay machines are uh, compared to the human beings okay as if they can understand uh, as if they cannot understand any lie okay so the figures of figure of speech in this line is personification right what else is here so here live and forgive are rhyming lie and die are rhyming so a a b b so the rhyme scheme of this stanza is also a b a b and uh, alliterated words see neither na okay so n sound is repeated so it is an example for alliteration so the rhyme scheme for this stanza is also drive and die were rhyming and light and right are uh, rhyming so a b a b understand let us go for the last stanza though our smoke may hide the heavens from your eyes it will vanish and the stars will shine again because for all our power and weight and size we are nothing more than children of your 
brain okay so already we have seen this line is an example for connotation right so what is the rhyme scheme eyes and size are rhyming again and brain are rhyming so the rhyme scheme for this stanza is again a b a b so all the stanzas in this poem rhyme a b a b so alliterated words we can see stars and shine so s sound is repeated so it is an example for alliteration okay so these are all the figures of speech in the poem the secret of the machines right now come back to the page number 151 so see here rhythm and rhyme they have given so rhyme scheme rhyme scheme is the poet's deliberate pattern of lines the rhyme with other lines in a poem or a stanza the rhyme scheme or pattern can be identified by giving n words that rhyme so here a b a b we have seen how it is it has a clear rhyming words with a b a b so the rhyme scheme is a b a b the rhyme is also clear with the same sound pit fit ask task play day okay <clears throat> so next one is imagery we have seen it already so the descriptions create a picture in the reader's mind we can see and hear and count and read and write the example explain explains to us the many tasks that could be completed by the machine next one personification so already we have seen in detail about personification in the previous videos i hope so personification is a figure of speech in which a thing an idea or an animal is given human attributes that is human qualities so we can pull so we here refers to the machine so machines enna solluve engalala pull panna mudiyo haul panna mudiyo push lift and drive so idella yaar panna mudiyo only human beings can do illaya so here human beings are so here machines are said to have the human qualities of pulling hauling pushing lifting and driving <coughs> so the figure of speech here is personification so the next one hyperbole a figure of speech using exaggeration okay so we have seen how what is exa- uh, hyperbole already so we are greater than the peoples and the kings so who are greater the machines are telling that so actually this line is not given in your poem they are the, it is telling that they are greater than the peoples and the kings okay so that's why it is hyperbole next one assonance A repetition of the two or more vowel sounds so we have seen it already next one is connotations so it suggests beyond what it expresses okay it adds additional meaning along to the literal or the main meaning so the example is though our smoke may hide the heavens from your eyes <clears throat> so next one is alliteration so repetition of two or more consonant sounds so what is assonance repetition of vowel sound is assonance so repetition of the consonant sound is alliteration so we can print and plow and weave and heat and light so it is what are the alliterated words here print and plow right so next one is activity that you have to do write your favorite stanza from the poem and find the rhyming scheme so you can choose any one of the stanza from the poem <coughs> and you can write the rhyme scheme next one read the poem and find the lines for the following poetic devices or write your own example see here they have given alliteration so they have given alliteration assonance personification and simile so you can find write examples either from the poem or you can write examples of your own or from some other poem you have to fill this all by yourself okay so we have completed the figures of speech from the poem the secret of the machines so in today's class we have seen 
imagery and we have seen hyperbole we have seen what is assonance okay so i hope every one of you so hope every one of you have understood the figures of speech from the poem the secret of the machines so there are many figures of speech in this poem so understand everything very clearly note everything in your book okay so hope every one of you have understood thank you for watching thank you